Well, good morning. Uh, as we come to worship on this beautiful Sunday morning, on this Independence Day weekend, uh, we were reminded as Christians of a liberation uh, and a freedom from God that extends past any sin, any chain, any label that anybody has ever put on us, because when God sets us free, we are free indeed. Amen. Amen. And as we come into worship today, uh, whatever you come seeking, I hope you find. Uh, that as we come together out of many stories and many experiences this week, uh, some come looking for healing, uh, some come looking for grace, uh, some come looking for community. And so we bring all those stories together today, and we have a chance to worship together, to open up God's Word together, to sing God's praise together, to be in a space of worship together, to be filled up with the very life of God, that we are ready to go pour that life out for this world. And so I'm excited to be worshiping with you. Uh, as we open up and worship today, there's a lot of things going on that are going to help inform our work today and in the, the week to come uh, to put what starts here today into action. Um, we've got our outreach project for uh, June. You can see the testimony of just right over here on uh, Pastor Ty Terry's side of the altar space. Um, I think it's something, it's over 40 boxes that we have of our shoebox ministry that uh, United Methodist Women and our outreach committee have made sure are packed and ready to go. Um, so we celebrate the, uh, the, the finale of our shoebox ministry, which is also a great reminder that if you haven't brought your shoebox box yet, this is a great time to do that. And uh, we're kicking off our July outreach project. So uh, for the month of July, we're going to be collecting school supplies. One of our, uh, um, our, our common kind of outreach projects that we do every year, getting prepared for back to school. Can you believe we're already talking about back to school? <laughs> it's not time for that yet, y'all. It's not time for that. But it is time to start bringing in some supplies and getting ready for that. So uh, to support some of our local families and our school systems, uh, to take some of that burden off our teachers and our classrooms and stretch budgets. If you have a chance, we've got some, uh, some cards in our entry spaces that uh, let you know what sort of supplies are most needed this year that we can go ahead and start collecting our school supplies. Uh, a lot of great things going on um, throughout the life of the church. Um, as through the course of the worship service today, if you have a chance to fill out our connection card to let us know that you're worshiping with us, that'll help us uh, to better know who's here, how we can be praying for you, uh, how we're in community together. If you do have a specific prayer request that you'd like to lift up today in uh, your, uh, right in the front of your pew, there's a prayer card if you'd like to fill out and just let us know if that's something you'd like the pastors to be praying for or our prayer team or to add for a prayer list um, for the church. We want to be able to support and pray for each other in the best way that we can. But as we turn our hearts and our minds to worship this morning, what God is doing here in our midst, preparing for the work that is to come in the week ahead, uh, let us join together as we're able in the words of our call to worship. Will you rise as you're able as we read our call to worship together? The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. The risen Christ is with us. Praise the Lord. Amen. And let us continue that praise with our hymn of praise, O God, our help in ages past. Oh. 
where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is one true church, apostolic and universal, whose holy faith let us now declare. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. may be seated. At the end of our service today, we have the blessing of having some new members join us. And in that, we will ask them to make vows to this congregation, and we will be reminded of the vows that we make back. It's something that I like to mention every week as we come to this time of offering, because what we vow to do for this church is more than just about what we put in the offering plate that will be passed around in a moment. That's very important. It's how we are in ministry in our community and around the world as part of our connection with United Methodist Church. But it's also about what we give through our presence, our service, our witness, and our prayers. So I'd like to thank all that you can give not only through putting your gifts in the plates this morning, but there are electronic ways to give, which some of you here in the room and those of you online might prefer to use. May God richly bless the gifts and the givers of all forms this morning. Amen.
may be seated. Almighty God, we gather here this morning on a weekend where we celebrate the freedom and independence that we are blessed to enjoy here in this great country. We ask that you would give to the people of our country a zeal for justice, that we may use our liberty in accordance with your will. We ask that you would forgive our shortcomings as a nation that you would purify our hearts to see and love the truth. But as much as we love our own country, this morning we are reminded that there are people around the world living in other nations who love their countries just as much. We ask that you would be with them in whatever they are going through, that they too would pursue justice and freedom and truth. God, you rule all the peoples of the earth. Inspire all of those who you have committed the responsibility of government and leadership to and give them the vision of truth and justice that by their counsel, all nations and all people may work together. Lord, we gather this morning and we bring with us our praise and thanksgiving for the many ways that you have blessed us and we also bring with us those things that pain and worry and concern us. Whether it's things within our own bodies, our families, our neighborhoods, our nation, or the world, we are thankful that you are a God who walks with us, that you are a God who wants us to cry out to you, that you are a God who hears. Lord, help us to see that you are truly with us, and help us to take every story that has been written with our life and use it in ministry to the world. Lord, all of these things, all of the things that are in our hearts and minds, we lift up to you this morning in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now I'd like to invite our children forward for Children's Moment with Miss Rachel. How are y'all? Good. Y'all are quiet. Good. Everybody's doing good. What do y'all think I brought with me today? A suitcase. A lot of stuff. I don't have anything. A Yoda suitcase. Yeah. Yep. That's great. It is. It's empty though. There's not a lot in it because I'm about to go on a trip and I've got to go home and pack. Um, what do you think I need to help? What do I need to put in my suitcase? Can y'all help me? I don't think I can fit a giraffe. We're not talking about Noah's Ark. Clothes. That's a good one. Clothes. What else? Some toys for Luke if he gets bored. That's a good idea. Shoes. I don't have, yeah, we don't have a turtle. An iPad, a hair ties. Oh, an iPad, yeah. So that's lots of good ideas. So do you know in our Bible story today, Jesus appointed 72 of his followers to go out on a trip and to go to all the town and places before him and share the good news about Jesus coming. And do you know what he told them to pack? What do you think? What do you think he told them to pack? 
He told them to bring nothing. He said, bring nothing. He said, um, don't grab a bag or a purse or even your shoes. And he wanted them to just go. And the reason he did that is he knew that sharing the good news about him was the most important. And do y'all know that we today, you and I, can go and share the good news about Jesus and tell people? He loves us, he loves our friends, and he wants all of us to talk about him, okay? So let's say a prayer, and then y'all can go with me to Children's Church. Dear Jesus, may we be ready and willing to go when you say go, and leave the results up to you. Amen. Thank you, Rachel. As our children go to Children's Moment, I invite you to stand for our hymn of preparation. This is my song. Before we hear today's scripture, would you join me in the prayer for illumination? Lord, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read 
and your word proclaimed, we may hear with joy what you say to us today. Amen. Today's scripture comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 1 through 11 and 16 through 20. After this, the Lord appointed 72 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. He said to them, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever, your ho whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if a person of peace is there, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move about from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go out into its streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet we wipe off in protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects you rejects me, and whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The 72 returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submit to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. Indeed, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that the spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to, to God. Summer is a great time for learning. Uh, we usually don't think of summer as the season where we do most of our learning. We try to take that as the, the, the season where we don't have to do much of anything. Um, but I've found that it's the perfect season to kind of maybe catch up on some of those things that um, maybe we don't always put at the priority list. You know, uh, It's time to catch up on some hobbies or some new skills or projects around the house that um, that maybe we need to work on, that we've just been kind of putting off to the side. And uh, the favorite, the, My favorite way to learn how to do those is just go to YouTube and find somebody else that knows how to do it and just try to copy them, right? But uh, summertime is that chance to catch up on um, some of those really important lessons on life that you don't really get a chance to practice other times during the year. Um, just yesterday, I made sure we had this time set aside with my daughters to pass on this really deep wisdom that I've been waiting to as a father and uh, we got ready and uh, taught them how to do handstands in a pool. <laughs> got to practice things like trying to see who can hold their breath underwater the longest while mom kind of freaked out a little bit to make sure everybody actually came back up. You know all those really fun things, those lessons that you don't really get other times of the year. Um, just this week from other families in the church, I've got to see different Facebook videos and Instagram videos of people learning some new things. We've got youth that are learning how to drive. 
Uh, we've got uh, new candidates for ministry that are uh, preparing sermons and liturgies for the first time and uh, just trying to kind of take those first steps into some larger lessons of life that, uh, uh, that now is the time of the year that's a perfect opportunity uh, to kind of shore up some of those, uh, some of those different things that, that maybe we hadn't had a chance to work on during the school year. Now, I have a way that I typically um, have learned that uh, I learn best, and it's called crawl, walk, run. Now, if any of y'all are familiar with this learning method, um, it, it really helps people like me that um, do one of two things. Um, I either um, feel like I should be an expert at something from the very beginning, so I just jump in right from the very start, just try to like, just, just run as fast as I can to complete a project or to learn something new and find out very quickly that I am in over my head or I am running full speed uh, directly into a wall. And things just kind of fall apart very quickly because I realize I don't have the skills, I don't have the lessons or the experience or uh, sometimes even the maturity to really have gotten myself into some situations because I didn't put the time in. I didn't put the hours in. I didn't actually really figure out what I needed to do to be successful in some things. Um, the other part is crawling. Uh, sometimes maybe I'm too afraid to really kind of take some larger steps and kind of stretch myself outside the comfort zone. And so I take things really slow. Um, but I found that if I break new things down, um, whether it's learning how to do a handstand in a pool, to driving a car, to fixing a lawnmower, uh, if I break things down into phases where maybe crawling is just becoming kind of familiar with the problem. Uh, what are, what are the, the goals that I'm hoping to achieve? What do I need to understand kind of overall? And then walking is getting my hands just a little bit dirty, getting involved a little bit, finding out where the, the pitfalls and the problems typically are. Try something. It doesn't work. You're not really going at too much of a speed, or you're not really so involved in the project that if you mess it up too much, uh, you've ruined everything. Um, but you're just kind of getting, getting your feel for it, finding out where your, your left and your right margins are so that you can make sure that you, you kind of know what needs to get done. And then running is you figured it out. You've figured out what the pitfalls are. You learned a couple lessons. You find out what works, what doesn't work. And now you're actually making some progress and learning something new or on a goal or an objective that you've kind of set for yourself. Um, and I found that this works pretty well most of the time. Uh, when it doesn't work is when I don't follow it. <laughs> and I just go sprinting off into problems, and I build projects and get involved in things that um, just really just fall apart as soon as I get far enough down the road uh, outside of, uh, of any sort of safety net or, uh, you know, uh, mentoring or experience that somebody else might have could have given me. Or These are the type of situations that uh, my mother likes to say, see, I told you that was going to happen. <laughs> We're all kind of familiar with those kind of moments. But I got to see this kind of play out in real time uh, last weekend. So uh, after I left here last week, um, after the Sunday service, um, I, no, I wasn't here last week. I was at Drill last week, right? Yeah. So once I left Drill last week, I went back home to five screaming children and nieces and nephews having their first summer sleepover at my house. Julia had them all weekend. I only got to come after work on Sunday. <laughs> but um, of all of my nieces and nephews that came, uh, four of them were girls, and one was a boy. And uh, my, my nephew, I asked him, I was like, are you sure you want to come hang out, you know, for the weekend? If everybody else, uh, you know, if it's just going to be girls? And he's like, well, I'm just going to hang out with you. I was like, all right. Guess we're playing video games. Like, this is going to be great. And, uh, and it was fun just trying to come up with things that I felt like he would be interested in. And uh, the one thing that, that his sights were set on, he kept asking me about it every time I talked to him on the phone getting ready to come down, was if we'd be able to play this one video game that I just bought on my Nintendo Switch called Switch Sports. Now, if any of y'all are familiar with Switch Sports, it's an interactive sports game that you hold the controls in your hand and you can do everything from uh, playing a volleyball game to playing tennis to sword fighting to bowling. Um, just this really fun kind of sports game. 
And, uh, and so he had been pumped up all weekend to play this sports game on the Nintendo Switch. And I was like, man, we are going to be able to kill hours with this thing. This is going to be awesome. And so we finally turned it on, and I said, hey, do you want to try sword fighting? And then he kind of got a little nervous, and he was like, I don't know if I want to try that. I don't know if I'm going to be good at it. And so inside my head, my internal dialogue was like, well, of course you're not going to be good at it. You've never played it in your life. I am going to completely destroy you. (laughs) It's going to be amazing. I've been waiting for this moment all weekend. Now, my external dialogue, what I actually said to him was, it's going to be fine, man. We're going to learn how to play together. And so we went through a tutorial together. He figured out what he needed to do with his hands. He figured out how it worked, what buttons he needed to push, and stuff like that. And so we, we kind of took steps, familiaring our, familiarizing ourselves with the rules of the game, figuring out what the goals were, figuring out how to move our arms and stuff like that to finally being able to get to play. And it was awesome watching him kind of move through these steps and kind of figure out and get his confidence up and and, and really kind of feel like he was getting really good at this. And then for us to finally start playing and for me to just completely destroy him again. It was awesome. Just to watch that, just to watch that confidence just shatter away, right? But no, he got hooked. He got interested in it. He wanted to get really good and then he wanted to destroy me. And that became his goal for the whole rest of that day. So when I had to go to work on Monday, when I came back a few hours later, uh, man, guys, he was awesome. He had been devoting his entire morning to learning how to beat me in this game that he had only just learned. And as I was watching him play, as I came home from from work, I, I started noticing the players that he was playing were not actually computer players he was actually playing other people all across the world live and was just destroying them, was just doing amazing. And once he found out they were real people, he got a little freaked out and decided he, he needed to go back to just playing the computer. But just watching how the confidence grew in being able to learn something that at the beginning he thought he was going to be awful at. He thought he was going to be terrible. This isn't for me. I'm not really good at sword fighting but then really kind of taking some steps to realize uh, that he can be pretty amazing. at something he didn't even really know existed <laughs> just a little bit ago. And so whether it's playing a video game, whether it's learning how to do handstands in a pool, driving a car, things like that, um, what we find is all these are transferable to our discipleship and our faith as well. The way that we grow in our discipleship, the way that we take some steps in our discipleship. Some of us, uh, we may be on that that part of that learning spectrum that, uh, man, we just get so pumped up, we feel like everything's going our way, and man, we just start running out in life insisting that God's got everything handled, and God does have everything handled, but sometimes God likes to teach us humility as well. And man, we just run right smack into that wall of reality of realizing that we don't have all of the answers in life. And then some of us, we might be more on the tentative side. It might be really hard for us to take those steps out on faith, to volunteer for something, or to, to, to stretch ourselves outside of our comfort zone, or uh, to say that I've always been sitting in the pews, and I've, I've always wondered what it would be like to, to sing in the choir, but, but never really having raised my hand to do it. This could be the season to do that. I plugged the choir for you. Yeah. They were, they were asking if we could talk about that. But we talk about those moments in faith that are just a little bit outside of our comfort zone that we're not even really sure how to do it. What's that next step in our faith? And so we come to a a very interesting story in the gospel today. The sending out of the 70 or the sending out of the 72. That as Jesus gathered some followers around, it's interesting the conversations that have been occurring right before Jesus decides to do this. Because we've been hearing in our scriptures the last several weeks, Jesus has been talking about the cost of discipleship. How this is hard work to come and to follow him. That it requires sacrifice. It requires giving things up. It requires understanding what is most important in this life and committing ourselves wholly to that faith of following after Jesus. That this is difficult, hard work. And no matter how much Jesus seems to say that to the disciples, they seem to think, no, it's okay, I've got it figured out. This is going to be great. To the point that even before the scripture that we read today, 
with Jesus talking about how difficult discipleship is, there's three disciples right before this trying to argue with each other about which one of them is greatest. Which one of us gets to sit at the right hand of Jesus in the life to come? Which one of us has this figured out at all? Which one of us is racing this marathon of faith and man, we are going to beat everybody else? The super disciple. And Jesus is like, I'm not sure you guys understand what we're actually doing. And he talks about lessons that we've heard many times about the first will be last and the last shall be first. But really what Jesus begins to do is set up an opportunity right here in this particular scripture that we read of saying, we've talked about how tough discipleship can be. We've talked about what discipleship can look like. Maybe it's time you guys put some hours in. I tell you what, we're going to send you out two by two. And we're going to send you to the cities and the towns that we're about to go into. And I want you to do nothing as simple as just bringing peace with you. Just go and bring peace into the households and the cities, and maybe they'll receive you, maybe they won't. It'll be good for you either way. It'll build character. And he sends them out. And he said, I'll tell you what, this time... All of the safety measures that you had, all of the bright ideas and all of the things that you've put in your pocket and your bank accounts that have always bailed you out in the past before, I tell you what, don't even take those this time. Don't take your wallet, your purses, your bags, your shoes. Don't take extra bread. Don't take anything that you feel like might get you out of a situation that might be a little uncomfortable or tense or hard. Because when you come back, there will be no other testimony that you have other than that this was all possible because of God. There's not going to be anything else that you can blame this on other than the very presence and the Spirit of God going with you into the towns and the cities and the problems and the hurts and the hardships that you're going to find on the way. And I like to think that it's almost like Jesus uh, having a discipleship academy for his followers here. Of saying, hey, I'm going to send you out, but with a little bit of supervision this time. Because Jesus is going to be coming through those towns and cities that he's sending them to. He's, he's going to know what happened. He's going to hear the stories of what went on before him as they go and try to prepare the way for him to come. And so they go out. And after some time, they come back. And what's amazing is these disciples are pumped up. Man, they're high-fiving each other. Man, they feel like they've been, they've been running that race. Man, it was, it was awesome, Jesus. Man, we were healing the sick. Man, we were casting out demons. Man, there wasn't anything that could stand up against what we had. It was amazing. And so they're just so excited about everything that they were able to do. And it feels like, man, they're on top of the world. It feels like they, they've just kind of blown right past the, the crawling and the walking. And, man, they're just running in their faith because they have seen miracles happen out of the faith that they went to go share. And I think Jesus' reminder at the end of the Scripture is don't be so excited about the power that you have or the ability that you're excited about but rather that you're a part of something bigger than yourself. That you're a part of the kingdom of God, that you have eternal life and, and a life that's to come, and you've only been sharing small glimpses of what's to come. What you're so excited about now is just a taste of the fullness of the kingdom of God that's to come. And you get to share it now, to tell people that something greater is coming. That is a richer gift than any miracle or special power or ability that you have in this world. But something that truly sets people free. And I find it interesting, the number, 70 or 72, around 70, that Jesus sends out. Because we see that Jesus' ministry is growing. It's gone from Jesus walking around the lake and asking people to come follow him to then 12 people being able to go and to share the story and the gospel and following after Jesus and helping Jesus to now, now 70. Things are just growing in just incredible, incredible ways. And yet, maybe there's still some tentativeness for other followers as well. Because if you flip just a chapter or so before, 
we remember the story of Jesus feeding over 5,000 people. And of the 5,000 that came and listened to Jesus and experienced the miracles of Jesus and were in his presence and heard his teaching, those crowds that have been uh, searching for him all along the shores of the Sea of Galilee, now there's 70. 70 of the at least 5,000 that were there just a little bit ago, not even counting women and children, of realizing that for some of us, we're still on the sidelines. Because we see what other disciples are doing, we see what other people are doing in their faith, and we say, well, that's just so amazing, but that's just not my gift. That's just not my calling. One of the the most hurtful things that we have done in discipleship as Christians is try to professionalize it of insist that there's some people called to ministry and other people not. That there's some people that help with kids and youth and worship and and, and preaching and teaching. But that's just not my gift. The truth is, every single one of us is called to ministry. Every single one of us is called to bring peace into every space that we go and declare that the kingdom of God is near. My job is no different than yours. There's a few other rules that are different, and there's a few other responsibilities that maybe don't show up on our our job descriptions, but the truth is, we are both called to the task of announcing that the reign of God is free and is here, and it's amazing, and it sets people free in a way that we've never imagined before. And we're afraid to take steps forward in that, because we either rely too much on our own ability and we've crashed and burned too many times before, or we're too nervous or too hurt to take steps out, out of the shallow end of the pool. When we make vows to the church and our discipleship to uh, support each other, uh, to, to lean into our faith with our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, it's important to take this time in a season of uh, perhaps learning other things, of leaning into other hobbies or opportunities, of maybe some other things that we haven't put very high on our priority list this summer, to take a look at those, those vows, those promises that we've made, our discipleship and our faithfulness, and say, is there a way that I can continue to move forward? To even take the smallest step if needed, what way can I continue to have movement to my discipleship and step out on that faith and find myself at the edge of the comfort zone that I have where I've shed all of the safety nets that usually are used to bail me out in these circumstances and I have just simply gone where Jesus has called me to go and see what the Spirit of God stirs in those moments. Are there ways that we can increase our prayer life? Are there ways that we can increase our presence this summer? Are there ways that we can increase our gifts? Is there ways that we can increase our service? Are there ways that we can increase our witness? Now, what's unique about the body of Christ is uh, some of us are maybe more gifted in maybe one of those places than another. And so if there's somebody that you've seen or somebody you sit next to in church or somebody in your community or at your work that you see is especially good with generosity or is especially good with teaching or is especially good with prayer, now's an opportunity for us to be students, to take steps forward and say, how can I get better at this? What can I learn or how can I practice or how can I lean into this? And it might look like we're just crawling in our faith. But that is a faithful crawl. And maybe it looks like we're just walking. But that's just a couple steps faster than where we were. Or maybe we take a big step and we start running this year. And we start making that big decision that we've been holding back on. Realizing that God is calling us to something a little bit bigger that we've been nervous about running into. But we're ready to just see where God is having us run towards. Because whether you're crawling, you're walking, or you're running, when we move forward in our faith, we're growing and allowing the world to see that hope, that love, that mercy, 
that reign of the kingdom of God because we're bringing it with us and more people come to know that love of Christ. Amen and amen. Will you pray with me? Almighty and gracious God, you call each and every one of us. And the greatness about this story that we've read today is that you don't call us alone, but you call us together. You sent out people in teams and pairs and community because you've reminded us that we need each other, that you've called us to be your people, that we learn from each other, encourage each other, that we lift each other up, but God, that we go with your spirit that calls us into a life that is bigger than anything we have ever imagined. Help us to grow in our discipleship this year, in our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that even the smallest steps forward we can take today will add up to greater life and hope for the world and where we find ourselves. As we pray all these things in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, before we come to his table, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be an obedient church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. We have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. Forgive us, we pray. Free us for joyful obedience through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. This proves his love for us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory, Glory to God. God. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. Your spirit anointed him to preach good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. And by the baptism of a suffering death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by the Spirit and by water. 
And when the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. And so on the night in which Jesus shared his last meal with the disciples, he took the bread that was before him. He lifted it to heaven, he blessed it, and he broke it. And he gave it to him and said, take and eat, for this is my body, which is broken for you. And after the meal was concluded, he took the cup. And likewise, he lifted it to heaven and blessed it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take and drink, for this is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink of this, remember, remember me. And so we do remember. We remember all your mighty acts in Christ Jesus. And we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with what Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your Holy Church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. now with the confidence of the children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is a table that is open for all people. Uh, You don't have to be a member of this church. Uh, You don't have to be United Methodist. You don't need to feel like you're running or even walking forward in your faith. You could be crawling along with uh, all the questions still lingering there. But today, at this table... If you desire to come taste of the things of God and see if they are good, then this is a table for you, and all are invited to come. For those that will be assisting in communion, if you'll come forward.
Would you please stand for our closing hymn? You may be seated. Uh, it is my joy uh, to introduce to you uh, several, several individuals that we'll be welcoming into the, the congregation of the church. We've got to know them uh, over the last several weeks and are just uh, blessed to have you all and your friends and family that have been able to worship with you. So I'd like to introduce you to uh, Claudia and Jerry Ball, if y'all would come forward. Deborah Furno and Brandon Hearn. Thank you all so much. Yeah. So they're coming to us from uh, Helena United Methodist, so have been uh, uh, great Methodists in Shelby County and here in our area for quite some time, and uh, joining uh, what God is doing here in Alabaster at uh, First United Methodist Church, but what God is doing here in, in our area, in our region, and so it is our joy to welcome you into uh, our congregation. As uh, those of y'all, are, you guys are always already great great Methodist, so you, you, know, you know what I'm about to ask you, right? Yeah. So as uh, we receive you into our local congregation, uh, it is our joy to be able to uh, affirm your membership vows in this church and to have our congregation affirm their vows to you, okay? So as members of our congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? Yes. Amen. It's always awkward when you say no. It complicates things. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And you as a congregation, as we welcome them, and as we bring them into the life of the church, uh, they have already been just a rich expression of the ministry here at Alabaster First. But now, as we take a deeper step, uh, one more step in our discipleship together, 
Um, Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and your care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm them in hope, and perfect them in love. And y'all have some vows and some things you'd like to say to them. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church. We renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, give him a hand, guys. Thank you. Yeah. So, welcome. Welcome to the life of the church. Like I said, you guys have already been uh, faithful participants in worship, and so we're excited to be able to take this step with you, and I'd love to just be able to pray a blessing over you all. Would that be okay? All right, let's pray. Uh, Almighty and gracious God, uh, Lord, for these amazing members of our congregation, these new friends and family that we've just met and for some have known for some time, God, we ask for the outpouring of your Holy Spirit on their lives uh, to find ways that we can surround them as a congregation, to support them, encourage them, and Lord, that they find ways that their gifts may be made to use uh, right here in this community, Lord, that others may come to know you. And I pray this blessing and the grace through your Holy Spirit and through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Give him another hand. Thank you. Several families have been able to take steps in joining our church over the last several weeks, and it's amazing to see the way that God is moving in incredible ways. Uh, that in each of our discipleship, we grow larger in our expressions of prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness, uh, because God has a purpose and a plan for each and every one of us, that you are uniquely equipped and uniquely placed to be able to share the peace and the announcement that the kingdom of God is drawing near. And so I give thanks for every single one of you and for our ministry as a local congregation. And I invite you to rise as we receive the benediction. So go now in peace, go now in power, go now with the very announcement that God has commissioned us to spread to the world, that the reign of God is close at hand, that the love, the peace, and the hope of God is here with us today. So go now in the power and the joy of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and forevermore. Amen.